All right, guys, welcome back. Let's do this. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. Hello? Yagami-san, do you have a minute? It's Shirasaki. Oh, I was just about to call you. I was gonna say, I've got some leads on the murder. By the way, you wouldn't happen to know a Detective Watanabe, would you? From Kanagawa PD? Oh, yes. He came asking me about the harassment case. Apparently he couldn't interview Ahara, so he got us instead. Wanna know why that is? Apparently Tokyo PD suspects Ahara might be linked to the murder in some way. And since they don't want Kanagawa stealing the show, they're blocking their investigators out. That does make sense. Not in a bureaucratic way. By the way, when's your next appointment with Ahara? As soon as we're ready, honestly. Did you want to come along? Yeah, I was just about to ask that. But I'd like to do a bit more research beforehand. I want to know exactly how Ahara's crime played out. Funny you should say that. Hoshino-kun just told me he's going to re-inspect the crime scene tomorrow. He said it'd be best to plot Ahara's movement from Ikebukuro all the way to Shinjuku where he was caught. No kidding. Then I ought to go with. If that's the case, hold on one sec. Okay. Yagami-san? It's me, Hoshino. I'm stoked to hear you'll be helping me out tomorrow. <laughs> I'm stoked to be there. Oh, and could you bring the statements from Ahara's arrest with you? It'd be a huge help if you could walk me through what happened on site. You got it. We'll be starting from Ikebukuro Station, so just meet me there tomorrow. Will do. See you then. Charge. Take a taxi. Oh man, I just want to walk there, man. <laughs> Let's go. It's a beautiful morning. Ooh. Hello, ma'am. It's a beautiful morning. Ooh. How you doing today? It's a beautiful morning. Ooh. How you doing, taxi cab driver? Get your ass in here. Ain't got time to be here. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry. You shouldn't have been a car. Don't say nothing. Don't feel like talking. God dang. All right, we at the station. Get your okay. ass out of my car. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Ehara was leaning on that before the incident. Yep, just like that. He was standing around searching for a victim. Ehara's the man in the cap and sunglasses. So, Ehara was lingering at the platform a while, huh? Yeah. He walked past the ticket gate at 7.43 a.m. This was confirmed by the security tapes as well as when he swiped his transit card. After that, he wandered the platform an entire hour ogling women. He spent that long choosing a target? Yeah. Sick, isn't it? Then the security camera that caught him would be... that one? That's right. Anyhow, at 9.06 a.m., Ehara finally honed in on his would-be victim. Then he boarded her train, which was departing for Shinjuku. She's the one in the pink cardigan and white skirt? Yeah, Yui Mamiya, an office worker and mother of a six-year-old boy. The two of them show up on the train's interior cam as well. According to the victim's statement, Ehara began by rubbing her posterior with the back of his hand. 
but it didn't stop there. After that, he put his hand up her skirt. Pretty sickening. I'm assuming he targeted someone shy, thinking she wouldn't resist. Makes me angry just thinking about it. The victim stated she was too scared to call for help, meaning she endured this for six minutes until the train reached its stop in Shinjuku. Can you send what you just showed me to my phone? Sure. Now let's head to Shinjuku Station. Then we can watch as the jerk gets busted. Even if we did defend him in court, an asshole's still an asshole. Looks like we're getting close to Shinjuku. The train's pretty light right now, but it was packed during the crime, right? Oh yeah, the car occupancy at that time of day can easily reach 180%. And Ahara should have been standing roughly where I am. Look for some clues. What the? Hey. That's not. Uh huh. That's not a clue. All right. <laughs> Suspicious. Ehara and Mamiya-san both exited the train and got onto the platform here. But right before that, Mamiya-san suddenly grabbed Ihara's wrist and yanked his hand out from under her skirt. That's when she got a good look at her assailant. So without a doubt, she saw it was him. Yes, and there were also traces of her garments on his hand during evidence analysis. Anyway, after being grabbed, Ihara wrenched himself free and took off at a sprint. See, here he gets off the train and bolts across the platform. And Mamiya-san chases after him, asking people around her for help. Ah, uh, this is what they kept looping on TV. Yeah. And honestly, with all this evidentiary footage, defending him in court was a lost cause. Was there any security footage that wasn't aired on TV? Sure. Take a look around you. There's more than just one camera pointed at us. They're practically everywhere. Oh, yeah. As for what I was saying earlier, Ihara was finally tackled right in front of those stairs. Oh, right. I have a diagram of the platform to show you. So, Ahara gets off the train here, and then gets apprehended here. How far apart is that? Roughly a hundred meters. Both he and the victim were weaving their way through the crowd. The whole scene was very chaotic. Even after Ahara was caught, the train was stalled 20 minutes until the area was deemed safe. Hey. You think we could get the positions of all these cameras and where they're pointing penciled in? Good idea. Let's check each camera's position as we walk over to where Ahara was detained. That's where he got tackled, so if you could let me know whenever you see a camera. I can mock it up on our diagram here. Like playing Where's Waldo? 
Oh, y'all been hearing some noise. I'm sorry about that. All right, there we go. Uh huh. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Looks like we checked all the nearby cameras. Let's go up a little further now. So let's run this again. So I'm gonna point out all the five cameras. One, two, three, Five, it was more than five. Five, and you go over here, right here. And then you gotta get this one too. That's where all the cameras are at. All right, let's go. Looks like we checked all the nearby cameras. Let's move on. Oh, we gotta check more cameras? Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, looks like we got all the cameras. Our diagram is now complete. Now we'll pencil in the camera locations and what directions they're pointing. Suspicious. So this was the general situation when Ahara committed his crime. What do you think, Yagami-san? Anything of note? Do you think Ahara and Mamiya-san were riding the train pretty frequently? Oh yeah, Mamiya-san commuted by train. She was here every weekday. Same goes for Ahara, actually, but he was off that day. Supposedly he was going to see his wife, even though they're separated. Hmm. Did he ever say why he wandered around the platform for an hour? He said the thought of his wife had him flustered and he couldn't force himself to board the train. He always had an excuse ready for anything you asked him, including the harassment charges. He pled not guilty, but the evidence said otherwise. There wasn't a single argument we could make in court to establish reasonable doubt. Safe to say he did it, but on the same day, he knew his son's bully would be murdered in Ijincho. 
<sighs> Pretty clear it wasn't a spontaneous need to grab some ass. I agree. It's almost like all the commotion around the harassment might have been planned out. Maybe everything was, even down to getting captured. Yeah. You really played everyone by turning harassment into an alibi for murder. No matter how much evidence points to him as a killer, he can deny it with complete immunity. This is getting crazier by the minute. At the very least, he had something to do with it. Some connection. But I can't imagine he'll talk. Whatever his plan is, it's pretty clear Ahara is committed. To what? Getting revenge for his son? I think so. Who do you think his accomplices could be? Ihara is a veteran cop. Think maybe he knows how to hire an actual assassin? If so, he could have just paid for his revenge, right? Sure. But assassins cost an arm and a leg. He wasn't rich before all this, was he? No. He barely scraped up enough to cover his lawsuit against the school. Not so. Hey, it's Shiosaki. What's up, Sari-san? I'm scheduling an interview with Ahara tomorrow at the Tokyo Detention Center. We'll take a taxi from Genda's if that all works for you. Sounds good. But I need to head back to Ijincho for now. Something you forgot to do? Yeah. It involves Ahara's motive, which would be without a doubt his son's suicide. So I want to confirm if Mikoshiba really bullied the kid. And the best person to ask happens to be down in Ijincho. All right. Then I'll let you get to it. Cool. Then I'll see you tomorrow. Second, I thought it said talk to save. All right, guys, I'm about to edit this part out. All right, anyway. All right, guys, I'm about to edit this part out right about now. All right, guys, we're here. All right, let's go. Oh, don't mind me. Do not mind me. Who are you talking to? Do not mind me. Wait a minute, let me see this. Do not mind me. Keep talking. What's... What, what's that on your phone? Let me see. There's nothing on your phone. Oh, no, no, no. Put it back close to your ear. Oh, I see. You're pretending to be busy. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I understand. I completely understand. I know Saw is tired of this guy already. Got a minute? No, not for you. I really have nothing more to say. 
What if I told you it's looking more and more likely Ihara-san had a hand in Mikoshiba's death? Well, it doesn't concern me. Ihara-san believes Mikoshiba tormented Toshiro-kun so badly that he took his own life. But neither the third-party investigation nor the courts were on his side. So what's the truth here? You know, don't you? <sighs> what really happened between Mikoshiba and Toshiro-kun? Why won't you tell me the truth? Why do you keep asking? I said I don't know! I'm going to the detention center tomorrow to get some answers out of Ahara-san. <sighs> what? I saw where Mikoshiba was murdered. He endured no shortage of cruelty before he died. They tortured him, you know. They broke all his fingers before they slid his throat. No. And somehow Ehara-san knew Mikoshiba would be killed on the day he got caught for groping. It's like he did it to prove he had nothing to do with the murder. But maybe that wasn't his real objective at all. I think he wanted to signal that he'd finally avenged his son. The body belongs to a guy named Hiro Mikoshiba. Four years ago, this man took my son from me by driving him to commit suicide. If I'm gonna face him tomorrow, I can't go in without some ammunition. So, four years ago, did Mikoshiba bully Toshiro-kun or not? That's all I want to know. My answer won't change. There's no evidence Miko Shibakun did anything wrong. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Take a look at this. That's... Toshiro Ehara, your student. Imagine that he's listening to what you're saying now. If you can look at him and say Miko Shiba played no part in his death, I'll leave you alone. In fact, you'll never hear a word from me again. So which is it? Four years ago, not long after I'd transferred here to teach English, that's when it started. I was trying my best to get acclimated, and I was finally on a first-name basis with everyone. One day, after school, I was out on the roof taking a break, when Toshiro-kun suddenly ran by. I called out to him to ask what was wrong, but he shushed me and kept running. I saw he had a bloody nose. Moments later, Mikoshiba-kun showed up. He was looking for him. I told him I hadn't seen him. Toshiro-kun's face told me everything I needed to know. So Mikoshiba was bullying him after all. Yes. Toshiro-kun told me this later on. Whenever he'd leave school with Mikoshiba-kun and his friends, they'd force him to hand over money. At first, they'd try to pass it off as a joke. They said since he lowered the class average on tests, he ought to buy them all drinks as an apology. And Mikoshiba-kun... He was having too much fun with it to stop. He started offering tutoring sessions to Toshiro-kun. Only so he and his crew could extract their tuition from him. They'd even break into his house while his mother was at work and take the money she left him for dinner. And if he couldn't pay, they'd beat him up at school or make him grovel in the bathroom. Didn't anybody see what was really happening? The teachers either saw nothing or turned a blind eye. Few students knew about it, though. Anyway, I ended up relaying everything Toshiro-kun had told me to those boys' homeroom teacher. Mind you, this teacher had tenure, title, and years of experience under his belt. Do you know what he told me? He said not to cause a commotion because those boys were about to graduate. Why does that not surprise me? To be honest, it was hard to paint such an outwardly model student in a negative light. There was also no hard evidence to support Toshiro-kun's story. 
But someone still should have stepped in to help. If only I'd understood that at the time. You tried. The only thing I tried was to keep an eye out for him. Making sure he wasn't alone, things like that. But unfortunately, that wasn't good enough. On the first morning of the third trimester, Toshiro-kun tied a towel to his doorknob and hung himself in his room. And that's when you confronted Mikoshiba, right? You asked him point blank if he'd bullied him. I did. Mikoshiba-kun pretended to know nothing. He was more careful, shaken even, from then on. In all honesty, when I heard a third party committee was investigating, I was hoping the truth would come out. Students were asked to fill out an anonymous questionnaire, and many of them wrote down exactly what they saw. Hold on. Didn't the court end up declaring there was no substantial evidence of bullying? How could they have said that with those questionnaires on hand? First of all, the committee never interviewed anyone directly. Those questionnaires were the only proof of anything. And the teacher of those boys was the one who collected them. Each time he came across any mention of bullying, he'd toss that questionnaire out. Also, he wouldn't get blamed in the end for ignoring the warning signs. So then the committee was pointless. A few students did speak up about the bullying online, but their posts weren't much to go on. Toshiro-kun's parents were completely caught off guard. His mother worked through the day, and his father lived all the way in Tokyo. That made it that much easier for the teacher to cover up all the evidence of bullying. He made that statement without even consulting the principal or the chairman. So, right before Mikoshiba-kun graduated, the committee presented their findings. That there was no evidence of bullying. The conclusion you've heard over and over. What the hell? In Japan, 300 children commit suicide every year, across all grades. Less than 3% are proven to be linked to bullying. Toshiro-kun's case ended up like that, too. But Ehara-san wasn't satisfied with those findings. So he sued Serio Hai, demanding compensation for Toshiro-kun's death. As the trial dragged on, I was eventually called to the witness stand. Of course, my intention was to let everything I knew out into the open. But before that could happen, that damn teacher came with the school's attorney to see how I would testify. They didn't want you making them look bad, huh? Of course not. That's when I first learned what he did with those incriminating questionnaires. They had no choice but to reveal everything to me, to try and sway me to their side. I guess they were just that desperate. After all, I was the only adult who Toshiro-kun confided in. I don't think he'd spoken to his parents about it once. So yes, that's why there was never any objective evidence of bullying. It wasn't like I had a mind to record our conversations. And I hadn't personally witnessed it, either. The school attorney saw fit to remind me that the law says innocent until proven guilty. And if I couldn't produce tangible evidence, then I shouldn't be accusing Mikoshiba-kun. So it was witness tampering? That is, they coerced you into false testimony? Must have been incredibly hard on you. What I should have done was told the truth regardless. But what else could I have really done for him? Some days I just don't know. As much as I've tried to convince myself I did everything I could for him, I can never fully believe it. So what happened to the teacher who covered all this up? He transferred to another school. Got to think he's still standing at a podium somewhere. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Even so, I don't have the right to place the blame solely on him.
Maybe, but in that case, Mikoshiba's bullying of Toshiro, or those questionnaires getting discarded. Have you ever told anyone else? No. I've been silent. Yagami-san, you know what? Back when I was a student in high school, I witnessed bullying firsthand. There was this kid. My classmates pushed him too far. And one day, he just jumped off the roof. Off the roof? By some miracle, he survived the fall. And he's been in a coma for the last 13 years. Nobody knows if he'll ever wake up. His name is Mitsuru, and he may never open his eyes to the world again. His mom watches him, but she works full time. She's a higher up in the government. I'm sorry to hear it. The worst part is that his teacher knew. He even talked to the bullies about it. But all he said was, don't overdo it. But afterward, the public eviscerated him. He had to quit his teaching job. And yet, for poor Toshiro-kun, nobody was held responsible at all. And that includes me. But if anyone was going to take responsibility for that, Mikoshiba should have been first in line. I'm sure Ohara-san must have thought the same thing. You know what I wanted to be as a kid? I was so innocent, I wanted to be a teacher. And after Mitsuro-kun's tragedy, I felt practically obligated. And still, I just let history repeat itself. <laughs> Why would you put an item over there? Alright, whatever. Alright. <laughs> 